Bulawinaka and welcome to the program. Today we're talking to Alfred Uluinayao. How can we best remember Alfie? Who can forget one of the top three tries scored in that 1999 Rugby World Cup tournament, one of which was in that blinder of a match between France versus Fiji. Alfie Uluinayao displaying sublime line running skills, perfection in execution, precision and agility. This is Alfred Uluinayao's story. And of course, that humble Fijian backdrop of his. How did it all start for you in rugby? What was your earliest recollection of? Ebnaka, Api. I think the earliest memory I remember playing rugby was back in the Utah Primary School. When, when I was there, I came through doing athletics. I always remember loving to, to run. So through athletics at Utah Primary School, doing the 100 meter Events. Uh, Veuto Primary School? Yes. So you went to Veuto Primary School? So I went to Veuto Primary School. I remember running the 100 meter sprints, 100 and 200, and mm. actually 400 as well with um, Henry Alder. Mm. So everyone, everyone probably still remember Henry Alder back, back in the day as, a, as a, one of the at top mm. athletes of, of Fiji Athletics. So I remember coming through with him through athletics. I'm not sure at that time if it was the Coke Games or the uh, Juicy Games, Juicy Games or the Colgate, Colgate Games, Games. But I, I remember competing at the national stadium, doing the hundred and the four hundred meters. So yeah, so that the cheering and the crowd. Yeah, the cheering and the crowd. Everything that goes with. Yes, no, it was good. The bare feet on the track. <laughs> but uh, I remember that and I enjoyed that, and then uh, naturally after that. Obviously, they had the, they had a rugby team, the Uta Primary School rugby team, okay. that competed in a couple of the primary school games. I think mm. it was then. And so I remember playing playing rugby then. So you can recall those uh, those early days of rugby in Fiji. Mm. I believe there were primary school teams from districts being put together. So you were also part of that too, from the Uta to Suva. And yes, yes, yes. I, I I do remember. Yeah, playing mm. playing those little those mm. those tournaments. Mm. And running around with the ball with my friends. At that time, I think it was more just playing with your friends and running around the ball, you know. So um, which which I enjoyed doing at that time. So uh, yeah, so that that probably would have been the earliest recollection of me playing and running around with the rugby ball. But prior to that, I usually was playing soccer and yeah. So I remember being brought up there by um, by my uh, momo, who's passed away now. Um, that was the, that was our family home uh, back then. So I always remembered. Running around with the local local kids there, playing soccer. I don't no. remember holding or playing mm, rug, rugby, mm. but I remember o always playing soccer. That place in in Chadwick, it was all full of people. Who, I mean, it was a uh, Fijian of um, of Indo descent. I mean, mm, they, yes. they played soccer everywhere. Yes, 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 that's right. So I always remembered playing with the, the our neighbours were Indians mm. across mm. the road were Indians. So it was just a natural progression to play soccer. So I don't I don't remember playing rugby at all. So it was always soccer. But that ability to play soccer at a very young age and then moving over to rugby and league, as you're saying, uh, it did affect the, the way you play later on. Oh, I d definitely, just um, the soccer in terms of foot eye coordination, your discipline, your fitness, um, the ability to, to run and stop as they do in soccer, mm. stop start. D definitely, definitely a, a skill that, that transitions to rugby, especially. Kicking game that, that you pick up, um, especially as, as fullback coming through through the grades and through my career, soccer was a big part of of uh, why I went so far in rugby because uh, the ability to kick off both feet, kick goals, um, and obviously the stop start running. So I think uh, soccer was a big part of my development through through for rugby. And you started playing rugby at fullback. Mm. You know, and, um, some of those skills that you learned, you know, way back, you know, must have come in handy. Yeah, yeah, de uh, definitely. It's like when we moved to New Zealand, I actually started playing um, rugby league. So a lot of a lot of my background was through rugby league, mm. uh, through the uh, local rugby club at uh, Mount Albert called uh, Mount Albert Rugby League. Why league Alliance? first, not union? I think when I was at primary school at um, Auckland, all my friends played rugby league, so it was just natural that. That I that I went with them to the local club um, and played rugby league with them. So in the local club, we lived in Mount Albert at the time, and Carrington Road. So it was natural that we that I just followed my friends to rugby league, and the mm. rugby club was was uh, just around the mm. corner. So it was just natural that I that I followed followed them through through that path. 
having a look back now, uh, how was rugby league different from rugby union when moving across? The um, well, rugby league taught me a lot of things. Taught me about um, obviously tackling. Um, at a very young age, you know, you, you get taught the basics of tackling, and that that helped me a lot transitioning to rugby. And also rugby league, you learn to to run different lines um, in terms of uh, running, running, running into space, running holes, mm -hmm. and at speed. And, and I think that was the, the main catalyst of of um, my transition to rugby and why um, I did so well is because the 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 background that I that I that I got taught from from rugby league. Support from home at a very young age, you know, must be very strong. And, um, just take us through it. Any any sports person or any uh, young person wanting to pursue a career in whatever sport they have, it's always important that your that your family is is um, behind you and supporting you all the way. And that and that means taking you to trainings or taking you to games. You know, it could be from one side of Auckland to the other. They're pretty much the, your, your taxi taxi driver, you know, for the first few years. And <clears throat> well, without that support and getting to the games, it's, uh, you couldn't do what you do, you know. So family support is very important. So um, I remember my mum and dad always taking me to, to trainings uh, um, or taking me to rugby games. If not, um, there's always someone there able to do that for you and taking you to, to places where you can you can play play the sport that you like. You moved from Fiji to New Zealand. I yes. mean, Fiji was you know hot, as you know, mm. you know and, and very humid. Mm. Uh, New Zealand is cold. You have to wake up really early yeah. at a very young age yes. to go and attend training. Sometimes I think it'll be very hard for you to. Oh yeah, was, this is definitely an, an adjustment. Um, the cold was definitely an adjustment. But as a, at a, at as a like I said, as a young age, I think uh, when I moved, when I moved over to New Zealand, I must have been, I think I was eight or nine. I think I was. And you, kids become resilient to anything, you know. So you ju you just you just go with um, with the flow, and you know, getting up in the mornings, like I said, I remember getting up in the mornings to, to play rugby league, bare feet, Ooh. icy cold grounds. This was uh, nineteen seventy something, you remember? Uh, 80, this is nineteen uh, seventy nine, seventy eight, seventy nine, eighty. Rugby think, league, barefoot. Yes, yes. Though, I mean, that was the. Yeah, I mean, that's. Mm. I mean, I, I remember um, even. Back in those days, I mean, yes, it was cold, but it, it didn't. It didn't. It seemed normal to us, you know. Every, every, all the other kids were doing it, so um, I suppose that it, it mm. made us tougher. I suppose, you know, in some some way. But um, that, that's just the culture we were brought up here. So you just went with it, and yeah, uh, you get up early in the morning. You, like, it was cold. The grass was cold. You just, you know, you just run around, and because you wanted to play with your friends and. And, and play play the game you, you, yeah, that you love. If you can remember, at what time did it really dawn on you uh, during um, during age grade rugby mm. that this is something you want to move ahead with rugby? Yeah, I think I think um, my first year in the transition from rugby league to to rugby, I made the, <coughs> the my first rep rep trials mm. in, in rep rugby team. I think it was Auckland under 13s so or under 12s. So and then from there, I said, that I thought to myself then, mm. I said, okay, this 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 could be something special, mm. or, or career I could be focused on. I've, I always knew that I've always had something special, True. Um, but it was just getting to that that level where um, you you get recognised for, it and you get, and then then your mindset changes, you know, where um, where you think, okay, this could be something that I that I, that I could do here for career, and then. From there, you take steps to, to follow that. So when you first make it into uh, the Auckland under, under 12 mm. and under 13, were there some players that you uh, that you uh, rubbed shoulders? Then did you meet later during your rugby career? Um, I have, I've, I've had players that that I came through that mm. actually left the sport and became actors and 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 pursue other careers. Okay. You know, so um, which is interesting, but. Um, uh, earlier, earlier on, um, yeah, we've, we've actually we've had I've had uh, players that I came through that that I've made very close friends with, and we went through together mm. through Auckland, through playing for Auckland PC, and then we ended up playing in Japan together. So uh, yeah, it's it's a as they say, rugby is a oh a mini sport. It's it's a it's a family, and and that's that's where you build most of your close friendships is mm. through through sport, and and I was. Um, 
blessed that I've uh, that I've made a lot of good friends through 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 the sport. Secondary schools of rugby in New Zealand. Mm. I was fortunate to go to a very good high school at, at the time, Malaba Grammar School, so that were um, had a very good uh, rugby program set up there. And Fish of Ten Rugby New Zealand is um, regarded as one of the top top mm. competitions in New Zealand rugby. That's that's where obviously our, our future professional sports people, our future All Blacks, come from. And so, uh, so it's treated very highly, and so very competitive. So, um, and so to make your first fifteen rugby team was at at that age probably was probably the pinnacle mm. in my career uh, as a young player coming through. And so, um, and the support you get from the school is uh, immense. And so, to make the first fifteen at, at your school is a really proud moment at that time for me. And then um, wearing the jersey and running out every Saturday with the support of your school was. Uh, was always a highlight. The move from secondary schools rugby to uh, the NPC at that time. Mm. Um, rugby uh, institution at that time was a bit at its um, at its amateur level. Mm. You know, so uh, in terms of training, mm. structure, uh, development, how was it at that time compared to what is it now? Mm. Well, you said it was uh, very very amateur. So all of us had to had to um, had to work. Um, do our normal jobs. Um, some of us were studying at the time, so uh, university studies or studying at uh, Polytech. So we had to, we had to do that, um, and then and then train train as well. So um, I remember having to train early in the morning at seven for Auckland, um, okay. going to work, and then coming back in the afternoon to study. So. Uh, coming back in the afternoon to train again, so, so it was difficult. But that's just what you do. I mean, um, you you at that stage you 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 played because you because you because you love the sport, and so and also it taught you uh, discipline and work ethic. That you also had to to work to m make a career or have life outside of rugby. Um, True. Um, so that, I mean that that taught that taught mm. us uh, a lot because uh, rugby wasn't our main focus mm. at that time. Um, so uh, obviously life after rugby was was just as important. So and that that, that was the main difference. Mm. You were with Auckland when Auckland was uh, was at its, at its peak. Mm. I mean there were legends of the game, uh, so to speak, mm. with Auckland at that time. Yes. What were some of the memorable moments you would want to remember during your days in Auckland? As an NPC player, was. yes. Uh, at the, at that time, we had uh, uh, well, the legend, the legends of Auckland rugby and All Blacks rugby playing at the time. We had the Sean Fitzpatrick's, the the Brooks Zinzan, Robin Michael Brooks, Jones, yeah, John Michael, Michael Jones, John Curran, Terry Wright, mm. McCarhill, um, yeah, Peter Fadialofa, one of the the great mm. rugby of New Zealand and Samoan rugby, uh, all of Brown. So yeah, so I had rubbed shoulders with those with with a lot of those guys. Um, as a as a young man coming through, um, their their discipline, their work ethic, their their standards that they set, it naturally just rub, rubs on to yes. someone as young because they they commanded that that standard, and so if you don't live up to that standard, um, obviously they'll tell you about it straight away, you know. So you're always on your toes, making sure that you're always up <laughs> to that standard. That they require mm. you to be at. Mm. So, mm. yeah, it was very good for someone young like me coming True. through. Um, I think I was, uh, I think I must have been about 24, maybe 25, very coming, young, yeah. coming, coming oh. through and then rubbing shoulders with those, with mm -hmm. the, well, the the superstars of All Black True. Rugby at that time, you know, so legions of All Black Rugby. So, yeah, I was uh, definitely open, but um, a real blessing that, that I could learn from mm. people like that. Were there some matches you want to recall, or some moments that you recall? Um, well, obviously, my my first game playing for Auckland is always 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 memorable. And we played against Wakato, and uh, I think it was NPC or Super Ten at that time. So this was in nineteen. Uh, you remember? I think it was ninety four. I think it was um, playing at Eden Park. Mm. Um, I think we were called the Young Guns at the time because we I had uh, Jeremy Stanley playing, mm. uh, Martin Stanley. Mm. I had me on one wing. Uh, I think Brian Lima and the other Cashmore and the other side. So mm. yeah, so we would um, the we'll label the young guns coming coming through. Um, but um, yeah, like 
when you when you wear the white and blue hoops of Auckland sure. rugby, um, you've always had the standards to stand up to, mm. and um, you have to get an opportunity to wear it for your 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 first game for Auckland at Eden Park um, was yeah, was definitely memorable. Eden Park, the atmosphere. Yeah. Yes. So when you played there for Auckland, what was it like? Oh, it's always uh, it's always been a dream of every every kid living in Auckland and playing rugby is to play at Eden Park. That's the ho the hollowed turf of world rugby, and so. Um, um, uh, if you're playing for your club there on a, on a grand final, you're playing for Auckland, it's always a privilege to play on that field. And and um, and when it's when it's full of people, uh, you, you can't beat the atmosphere. Why did you decide to leave Auckland, NPC, and New Zealand for overseas? Well, I think at, at that time it was the transition from amateur to professional rugby. I had um, made the uh, the Blues in '96. I did my ACL. Rocked with my HCL, okay. and I was out for one year, uh, pretty much one year, from from then. And so, and that time it was very competitive, you know. So I was competing against the the Cash Moors. Uh, Shane Howth was still around at that mm. time. Obviously, had uh, Waisaki Satutu was was there. The Brainley Mars, um, James Kerr. So the, the, so a lot of young players coming through, were getting very competitive. So I thought at that time in '96. My so you moved in ninety six. Yes, so. I, I moved in ninety six. In ninety six, I, I thought to myself it was time to to move and see if I can make a little bit of a career out of out, out of the sport. And I knew that as a professional rugby player, you, you only had one chance and only one chance to make some make a living out mm -hmm. of it. And so at that time, I thought that was that was my opportunity to to leave and move to Japan. So. Um, um, and so that was the main, the main decision for me to, me to leave was to try and see if I can make a living out of it. Rugby in New Zealand and rugby in Japan, what's the difference? Are there any uh, similarities? Are there any difference in terms of uh, development-wise, uh, training, structure, food, yeah, even the people, uh, yes, no, the def climate? No, definitely deve development-wise, obviously Japan at that time was st still learning how to play the game. Yes, mm. they. Uh, yes, they had a professional uh, setup, amateur professional setup, semi-professional setup in Japan at that time. But so you were one of the first people to move in there to play rugby. Yes, that's it? right. So right. So I was, I, prob I was probably the second lot of of guys moving over to Japan yeah. to play uh, professional professional rugby. If, but Japan, like I said, was still semi-professional, so they were still okay. getting their head around professionalism. So, uh, so my first year of rugby mm. in Japan, I had to work as because of semi-professional. At that time, people still had to work. Was the money um, good? Uh, yes, I mean, I'd say the money was good, not as good as now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was playing now, but uh, yes, like I said, it allowed me to, to make a living True. and to, pro to provide um, uh, a future for, for, mm. for my family. For family. Mm. The decision to finally don the uh, white jumper of Fiji. Um, a lot of players, um, the young players who mm. are playing now, still dreaming to don the national jumper. Mm. How did it all come about? Yeah, it was it was, it was tough because coming coming th coming through rugby in New Zealand, um, it's there was always been a dream to, to play to to play for the All Blacks, you know. So I had the opportunity coming through second school in nineteen eighty eight to to wear my first black jumper, and that was oh. through the New Zealand second schools, and that was with the Waisaki Sotutu. So he so he was a second five coming through Wesley oh. College. And I was the wing fullback coming through Malaba Grammar. So to have two Fijian boys yeah. come through the system through New Zealand sure. rugby was mm. um, was important. wasn't was yeah. important, but it also highlighted that um, for us anyway that as uh, Fijian boys coming through, that mm. you know if we work hard enough, you you could achieve that goal. So to have me and Wasaki in that 1998 New Zealand secondary school mm. team that toured Australia was uh, was a highlight and so and coming through that and made New Zealand 19s mm. after that so it's always been a goal did so you ever thought at one time to wear the the um, the all black jersey oh definitely definitely oh, I mean, oh, yes and uh, and that was my goal was to wear the all black jersey and so we I came through then I picked up like I said a couple of um, serious injuries with my with my knee yeah. and so it had to restart mm. again so that took me a year and a bit to mm. to restart my career again, as you and say. It's not easy to go back and restart. Yes, that's it. And yeah, and, and by that time, a, a year is a long time True. where a lot of, a lot of players are coming mm. through very quickly, you know. And so, 
it's a, when I started back, when I got my knee back right, it was having to restart my career again and having to fight for position. So, mm. yeah, and, and but I yeah, still had the dream of wearing that jersey, mm. you know. So, yeah, and, and so the, the, the transition to decide to play for Fiji oh, yes. it was was, mm. it was in '96 when I had mm. that I had a second major injury in my knee, and and that's when I decided to move to Japan. And um, and towards the end of that year, there was a, uh, I think it was a tour of South Africa with Brad Johnson as a coach, and so he gave me the opportunity to come and trial. And that's that's when everything happened. When Brad gave me a call and said, "Would you like the opportunity to play for Fiji?" Mm. And I said, uh, "Yes." I thought, Why not? Yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> so again, the opportunity to represent my country of birth and my family. So mm. so to be given the opportunity to um, to trial for Fiji. And to see where I was at was uh, was a blessing. Mm. Your first World Cup for Fiji, when was this? This was 1999. It was 99 mm. in um, in Europe? Yes. Mm. Tell us about the team and uh, the team bonding, the coaches, the management, um, the atmosphere of having played in New Zealand and mm. Japan, and then suddenly moving over to Fiji. I mean, it's a it's a whole new scenario. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it was definitely mm. different stepping up to international level. For Fiji, so like I said, Brad gave me that opportunity. I had a, a trial. Um, I was lucky enough to, to make 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 the side. Um, obviously, had to play the, the World Cup qualifiers, but Brad kept that core of players mm. right through for the four years, building up to 1999. So we had the Imori Katalaus, the the um, Joely Vitiakis, mm. Greg Smiths, uh, Simon Rao Louis, mm. um, Jacob Ra uh, Jacob mm. Rauluni, mm. Moses Rauluni, you got Nikki Little, mm. Lawrence Little, mm. Sally Soravaki. So mm. the, those yeah, like the um, call of the team. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was the very important part of our success was because we we had we built the team around that core mm. and the standards that we needed to to play at or to train at to to do something special at ninety nine. Mm. And so we all had the the once we made the world made the world cup um we knew we made the world cup then the, the focus really changed mm. for us to to work very close together i believe the team that went in 1999 was probably uh probably the best compared to the one that went in 1987 and mm. the one in 1991 mm. you know which uh, the uh, the one that went in 99 i think o almost lost all the games mm. uh, but the one in 1987 qualified for the quarterfinals here at Eden Park. Right. Your team was one of the team that really made an impact. Mm. Oh, I, th I think I think we prior to coming to the World Cup, we trained really hard. Mm. Uh, Brad really put the, the onus on on us to to really work hard. Uh, so we we did a lot of work in Fiji. Um, we played uh, obviously the, the normal three nations against Samoa and Tonga. We also did some camps, and so our f we were really focused on on the World Cup, and, and which brought us together. So. By the time we got to the World Cup, I think we we're probably, as a team, we we're probably the fittest we would ever been. We were the closest we would ever been as a team. Mm. We just bonded and we wanted to play for each other. Uh, didn't we didn't want to let each other down, and also with a focus of our country with, with their support behind us. So, and so that was a major push for us to to um, perform really well there at the World Cup. And so. Um, uh, so yeah, so yeah, so we just fought fought very hard and trained very hard to to play to the to the best of our ability to make sure that that we weren't only proud of us of our own performance, but our our families and friends back in Fiji were proud of our performances. You were mentioning that you were playing wing at times and played fullback, mm. but how did you decide that fullback was your number, number fifteen? Yeah, it, it was um, back in Malabar Grammar School uh, playing first fifteen rugby. Like I, um, so I I started off my first year at first fifteen as a as a first five. Mm. Um, and played there for the whole year, and I thought I was—I thought I actually enjoyed that position. I was only in the second year that that we didn't have a fullback that um, that the coach decided to move move me back there uh, because of um, my my speed, um, my ability to as a last last defender to tackle. That, that was from my my league background, mm. and also through soccer, my kicking ability. Mm. So. Um, and so, for my for the coach, that was a natural natural progression for me sure. to go back there. And so, from there, that's that's pretty much where I started playing fullback as um, as an option. And then, uh, then I never never looked back after that. And then from then, 
um, again through my background in the rugby league, the, my ability to to run holes, to run space, to read space, and also the ability to kick both uh, both feet, both sides through my from from my soccer background. Mm. Uh, that pretty much that's the was it. That was, that's pretty much where I stayed from then on, and then. Coming through club rugby uh, at Ponsonby Rugby Club, um, that's where I played most mm. most of my rugby at fullback. Um, it was only when I went into Auckland rugby that I that I switched to 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 wing mm. and fullback. Played both 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 sides. So um, yeah, I think so. I say it was just um, I think natural a natural transition for me to move to fullback. Um, my coaches at Malaba Grammar at that time. Nice Toki and Peter um, Whiting saw that, um, and that so so that so that move was made from from that uh, earlier on in Malabar Grammar. But 1999, uh, the world saw three best tries being scored by three number 15s, and uh, yours was actually one of them. That match between France, it was nail biting. Um, it was a match of the tournament. Mm. Uh, Fiji uh, could have won the game at mm. the end. Uh, that uh, decision by Paddy, mm. um, everyone knows that. Mm. And of course, that try they just scored. Just take us through it. Yeah, I, I, we knew that that game was probably the most important game of the World Cup. Um, if we beat France, we would have made it to the quarterfinals. And so, again, we uh, we trained well that week leading up to that to that test match. We knew what the job had to be done. Brad um, set the game plan for for that test match and so we're ready we're ready when we turned up to Toulouse rugby rugby stadium we were ready for that game so prior to prior to the game so we walked out we looked we obviously we walked out and the crowd the atmosphere it was all there it was all there i think that got us excited mm -hmm. you know and i i remember telling the boys when we walked before, before we walked around i said you've got to soak soak this atmosphere sure. up enjoy it take it and then we, we roll with it so and and I think that's what we did we mm. we we played you know we we played probably to the best the best we 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 ever played that mm. that that day we were fit we were physical mm. we confronted them um I think I think which gave them a bit of a shock because we, we tackled our hard outs that 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 day and and yes and like I said and we got close you mm. know and um, yeah, unfortunately, um, there were few few calls that go away, and um, and I remember after the game, Paddy coming to the training room and and apologised to us. Why did he do that? Um, because I I, I I I knew well he he knew that that wasn't his best game. Uh, I think he admitted uh, afterwards that it wasn't his best game. Um, I think he um, and so, but like I mean. Everyone has bad games. Not True. only players, referees True. have bad games. You know, um, yes, unfortunately, that day was his day that, yeah. that he had a bad game. And um, but, like I said, we 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 this we were disappointed that we lost. Um, but we knew that we we walked off that field. We gave it a hundred percent. You and uh, Sotutu, you know, you were playing uh, New Zealand rugby together mm. as uh, as students. You played well again for Auckland. Mm. Um, you've been close mm. um, as a family mm. uh, on the field. The final pass that came to you mm. came from Sotutu, didn't yes, it? Yes. Yeah. For that try, what was running through your mind? Well, I, um, I knew that shows that Sotutu knows your game. Yes. And you go, and you knew the kind of game that he played. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I think it did. Like you mentioned, I think it did just come from us knowing each other because we've we've played a lot of rugby together. It we, helps. Uh, yes, it helps. So when we came through, like I said, we came through. Second school rugby together uh, through Auckland rugby together, and obviously um, uh, with the Blues, um, and then obviously with with Fiji. So, you know that I think that was about ten years, maybe so, prior to the World True. Cup that we'd been playing together. You know, so no we, one there knew that you and Sotutu have been playing together for a long time. Yes, but that ball that came from him, mm. boy, you made a good run for it. Yeah, I I I I I mean I saw the space and I knew if it, if Saki had, if a Saki was to throw that ball I, I was I was hitting the hole, um, and that was one of my strengths as, as like I said from rugby mm. league was was hitting space line running line, line running changing a line running and I knew that um, if Saki could see me if he saw me and uh, that if he threw that pass I was in that hole so um, fortunately he, he he saw me running that hole you caught um, them off we, their feet well we 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 pre called that that move huh. um, and so it was just it was just timing. Um, that put it together. 
like I said, we 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 knew each other. He knew my my running lines. I knew the the pass. If he if he hit me, I was in that hole. So um, so there was a pre called move, and it um, and it, fortunately it, it came off, and uh, me hitting the hole and. And, um, but you have to do a step because there was someone at the back. I think it was a fullback. Yes, yeah, so it was a it was a fullback. It was a line line of defence, and yeah, I, I saw him there, so I knew if I did, if I took him out and step back in, I'd I'd, I'd had him, and and fortunately, um, that worked, and and um, it paid off. So and I scored on the post. Where did that move came from? The salute the, the, after the try. Um, yeah, I think it was just instinctive. I think it suits um, it well. Um, well, I mean, it, it, it came, obviously came back to when I was back when I was young, back in Fiji. I was brought up. Oh. And I'm at the military camp uh, with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Pia Wong. Yeah. Um, so I, I had some time with him and and watching a lot of uh, army rugby. I mean, it just you know? suits the move. I mean, the whole move, it was you know, crisp and precise with timing. I, I, I think it was just instinctive and it just, um, it just, just came top of my head, I mm. think. And, and also thinking back to when, when, I, mm. when I was young. Um, so, um, yeah, just, just something just came out naturally, I suppose, and instinctive. Mm. So for you, the 1999 World Cup was probably the peak of your career, was it? Yes, I, I'd say so. It's definitely, um, like I said, we, um, I tr trained hard for that. Um, the whole team trained hard for that. That's probably that's probably been the fittest I've ever been uh, in my career, and probably at, probably at my, in terms of peak condition, uh, in terms of skill level and fitness, this, that I was probably the, the best I've ever ever been. Behind every successful man. Mm -hmm. And um, a clever man, a strong man. There, there is an even successful, clever, and a stronger woman, mm. the wife, Tammy. Yes. Mm. Who is she in your life? You know, as a player, as a mother to your family. Mm. And how did this all come together? I mean, I am surprised. She wore 15 mm. for the team, and you wear 15 too. So. Mm. Yes, I think it was. Um, yeah. So um, Tammy, um, we we met earlier on in my career um, when she was. Um, Playing rugby league, she was a she's a triple international. So she played rugby. Okay. She played touch for New Zealand, played rugby league for New Zealand, and then rugby for New Zealand as well, um, and also and also rug, rugby for, rugby sevens for New Zealand as well. So, so she'd come through with the same attitude mm. and pedigree of, mm. of sports that I, I came through. So and we met through through the sporting circles. So I I knew she knew that the work that was required that 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 needed to to become a a top. Um, International athlete, and and so, um, so I think it was just a natural fit that we, we met, um, and sh she was obviously uh, playing for the Black Ferns at the time in her career. Uh, number fifteen for the team. Yes, and she was number fifteen too. Yes, though. yes. Um, I'm not sure if they. Uh, what is it? Is it a chemistry? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it was, um, was chemistry or not. But um, it just happened that way that that she was playing fullback for the Black Ferns at the time. She, um, she when I was when we, at the '99 World Cup, um, she had just finished playing at the '98 World Cup for the Women's okay. World Cup, okay. and that won that. Mm. Um, and so she was still playing for the Black Ferns mm. when we were. Um, uh, courting, I suppose you should say. Mm. So, and she was still training, mm. and so you know we still both had our own lives in terms of our our um, sporting achievements and uh, and goals that we wanted to set. Um, so um, yeah, I, so I think it was important that she understood that she she knew what was required True. for you to be a, a top a athlete a, a rugby player, player. Rugby player and mm. a top athlete so and the training you have to was required with all those training, yes that's right and so she was doing it himself so yeah. um so i think it was a blessing i think that yes, that, that we met and yeah. we knew each other the requirements that's needed to to be at the top yeah. echelon of your sport and so um um and so yeah so we we just pretty much just made sure that that was our main focus first and and then we did what we had to do how did both your discipline in terms of being uh, a sports person now come together uh, as a couple, a man and wife with your three lovely daughters at home? Yeah, yeah, how did I, it all pour out into the home? Yeah, you know, I, I think that's um, it's at any, anything you do, you try to do it to the best of your ability. So, and through that, hard work is very important. So, um, uh, no matter what you do, you need to work hard for it. I uh, yes, you'll have some failures. True. Um, yes, you'll you'll fall down and. The most important thing that you get up and, and and you and you carry on, you know. Don't just sit down and complain, 
and don't do anything about it. You have to get up and do something about it. So, um, so it's important that uh, that you always work hard, that you try to uh, perfect your um, everything that you do. Um, this um, perfection is is hard to to obtain, but uh, but you'll get excellence before that. So um, so that's so that's 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 important. So that's something that we always try to pass on to our our girls, um, not only through sport but through schooling. Um, so. Just through everyday life, and so um, it's important that we, you know, that we try to teach teach the, those values to to our kids. Alfie, um, uh, the viewers um, would probably want to know what are you doing at the moment. Uh, yes, yeah, so after I finished my rugby career, I um, I did a little bit of coaching. So um, I went back to Japan and coached uh, my old club Santori. How's coaching different from playing? Oh, it definitely differs. There's a lot more work involved. Um, uh, in terms of uh, prepping everything, in terms of uh, trainings, in terms of uh, working with your players, uh, skills, development, ev everything. It's a lot more diff different, a lot more work. Some people are good players, but they don't coach well. Mm. Some are good players and they coach well. Mm. Yeah. What is the... Oh yeah, d definitely. I mean, yes, some coaches don't make... Um, some players don't make good coaches. Uh, sometimes it's... Um, I think it's good coaches. I think it's uh, it's something you you do learn as as you go along. Um, you definitely have got to have very good people skills. Um, you'll find that a lot of a lot of school teachers make good coaches, um, and so uh, because they they know how to deal with situations, mm -hmm. they know how to deal with people um, at certain points. So um, uh, yes, and that's something that I'm learning. You know, so. Um, so I've, I've had the opportunity to, to do some coaching. I've coached at uh, Auckland Rip level, sure. um, obviously coached professional level up in, mm -hmm. in, in Japan. I did have a stint with Fiji in 2010 oh, okay. um, as the backs coach with um, uh, someone Damoni, mm -hmm. Sam Damoni there. Um, uh, but yeah, so after that I, I took a step back and um, became a police officer. So. Uh, okay. So I'm a constable at um, with the with the New Zealand Police, uh, based at uh, Avondale Police Station in Auckland, working with the community. So I've been doing that now for about six years now. So, um, um, and and I enjoy it. Uh, mm. I I remember as when I was small, um, you know, with my with my family, um, some in the military, some in the police, and so um, and I've always wanted to be in the police. So it was just timing to join the police um, once my career had finished. Mm. And obviously, once I've settled back in New Zealand, and my family settled back in New Zealand, then I decided to, to, um, yeah, to join the police and go through the, yeah. the the study, uh, the training again to, to, um, yeah, to graduate uh, from the Wellington Police College. How did your life as a player, as a coach, all contribute to your work now uh, as an officer here in New Zealand? I think it's a natural transition because uh, obviously you've got to be disciplined, you've got to work hard. Um, like I said, you, you work with the community, um, and that's something that that you do as a professional rugby player. Uh, um, the dis you need the discipline there. You've got you've got values um, with rugby as 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 the police as well, um, and and you, the discipline is very important, and professionalism is very important. Um, so I think that's that's an, that's a natural fit uh, with uh, coming from professional rugby to the, the police force. Um, yes, uh, we do work closely with the community. Um, rugby does that as well, mm. because without the community um, support, uh, your team through rugby don't, don't, doesn't go anywhere. So, um, so um, yes. Yeah, so at this, at right now, I'm, that's my role is working with the um, community in the Avondale area. So, and I enjoy it. I love it, and it's um, it's uh, because every day is a new day. It's, it's something different, and uh, I enjoy turning up to work and working with the community. Of your uh, sports and um, rugby, and of course uh, in Fiji, as you know, mm. uh, not a lot of children are supported by parents uh, to see sports as a, as a way of life. What would be a message you would want to give uh, up and coming uh, rugby players in Fiji now, uh, advising them that rugby, that uh, there is also life in rugby and mm. life after rugby? Work hard to the best of your ability and perform hard to the best of your ability. I think that's probably the, the, the best thing because. Um, you only get one chance if you're if you, in, in sport if, if you choose that as your career, um, especially rugby because um, I think the rugby you have a
career span of 10 to 13 years, probably if, if you're lucky. And you're only an injur injury away from that um, not happening, you know. So, uh, so work hard, um, be professional, and do everything to the best of your ability. Mm. Alfred Unaneo, thank you so much for your time. Thank we you very much. We wish you all in your future endeavours. Naka. Thank you for watching. Do not miss out on our next program, where we will be talking to Choweli Vetayaki, who redefined the role of a prop forward in Fiji, having played top-level club rugby here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, all throughout his professional rugby career. Vinaka Pagalevu.